leaves tastes good like a beer should. You said it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> Try a frosty cold glass of Bavarian right away. What you say? No boulder dash or baloney here. Yeah. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. No matter how you take your hooch, we've got something ice cold and on tap. Now, serving it to you straight and unfiltered, here are Greg, Scott, and Dan. Oh, yes, we Mm -hmm. are. Welcome (laughs) in, everybody, the Unfiltered Gentlemen. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining. Most importantly, thanks for drinking along. Yep. Of course. All you drunks out there. I'm Greg, or that's Scott. Oh, yeah. And that's Dan. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, we have a special summer episode for you today. You know, summer is starting to come to an end. And, sad. Uh, yeah, it is sad. Yeah, it especially, sucks. Especially for Scott. He's a, a fan of summer. hot weather. I love summer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. His biggest fights with his wife are over turning on and off the AC. Yeah. We fight all year round, but the biggest ones are in right. the summertime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then winter, it's let's turn on the heater. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, so it's our summer episode. We're going to share with you some of our favorite summer beers that we've had this year. Uh, I mean, some of these are not just from this year, but uh, the fun ones we're digging this year. For sure. And we've got some friends that have sent in some of their favorite beer reviews as well. We've got uh, home brewer James, our good friend James, uh, Christina, Crafty Christina, Nick and Coley from the Booze League. Big Dick Nick. Uh, Deb over at Flatfish Brewing, Nicole from Beauty and Beer, uh, Dale, a.k.a. It's a Beer Girl, and uh, James from 805 Brews. We have, there's even more. Nice. I, I didn't right. write the entire list down because I'm an asshole, but we have even more. So all of our friends are going to tell us what they've been up to and what they've been drinking, and we're going to first start off with telling you what we've been drinking. Yep. Um, we've got great examples of summer beers in front of us. I think because of oh before i get into that let me just remind everybody hashtag show us your beers oh yeah if you're taking pictures <laughs> yes. of those summer beers and uh, don't forget to rate and subscribe on itunes and uh as we've discussed we love great can art so if you have great cans you don't do. forget to uh, oh, hashtag man. cans for cans because we, we love great cans. oh my god <laughs> <laughs> that is for sure all right let's get into some of these beers that we're drinking uh i think we need some very important music for this and very important work that we're doing from a bottle, yeah. from a can, why don't people understand my inebriation? Beer! Oh. Beer summer. <laughs> Try it. Beer science. Glass bottles, aluminum cans, hops and malts, and... All right. This one comes from an aluminum can. I'm going to start off with my pick because it's the lightest of all the beers we're drinking. This is from Made West Brewing out here in California. It's from Ventura, California. They recently got distributed by Stone Brewing. So people throughout California should be able to find uh, Made West somewhat easily and hopefully beyond California as well. Uh, Isn't that pretty gangster? That they got picked up by Stone? Yeah. That's crazy. All Stone right. distribution. That's insane. So, uh, and if you guys are having trouble finding some Made West, maybe we can work out a trade. Hit us up. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. DM, slide into our DMs at the Unfiltered Gentleman. <laughs> like all the kids are saying yeah, right now. Maybe, maybe that would be lit <laughs> or something. Anyway, so I'm drinking, I'm bringing into us and drinking Made West's Pale Ale, simply named Pale Ale. Faux show. This easy. thing is 5.6% of easy drinking, 38 IBUs. It has a very respectable, especially for a local brewery, 4.3 on Beer Advocate. And 3.71 on Untapped. From the brewery, they say heavily hopped West Coast style pale ale bursting with a bright citrus and fruity hop complexity. It has just enough malt presence to allow the loads of hops to shine through, including a generous dry hopping. This crisp, hop forward beer has a dry, refreshing finish. And the hops they used were Mosaic, Simcoe, and Yukonot. Have you guys had this before? Yes. I have not. Mm good like I, I think everything about it like i mean you know how you said it's called a pale ale yeah like the can is simply blue with a little marker with the logo on it. i yeah. mean everything about it is simple but sexy yeah you're right you it know is simple yet sexy mm-hmm. um yeah this has been the beer i have been jamming on all summer for summer 2018 excuse me uh as we all know i was absolutely in love with that invasion tropical pale ale from cigar city brewing just cannot find it so that would have been, not to take anything away from Made West, but that really would have been my summer beer, but I just could not find it again, so it was a little hard to review. Plus, we've had it on the show, so it was nice to bring in something new. Uh, this Made West in Cigar City's place, 
has been what I've been pounding all summer long. I've been taking <laughs> it to the lake with me, along with the lightest one from Integrin. Uh, I've been taking it to the lake. <laughs> I've been having it with barbecues. If you look at like the unfiltered gentleman as well as my own personal like stories on Instagram, like there is a ton of Made West Pale slash barbecue pictures. I have just been jamming on this all summer long. Uh, it's light on the nose. You really get kind of that uh, hop, the, the dry hop in it. You get that fruity from the hops, which is nice. Um, it's not too bitter on the back end. Like most of the hops were added, were added later on. Talking is hard. <laughs> uh, and I just, I don't know about you guys, I could drink like nine or ten of these and be yeah. very happy. It's delicious. It's a very good beer. can dig it. Yeah, I, uh, I dig a lot of these. So uh, that has been my, uh, my, my submission for summer 2018 uh, beer review. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Scott, what do you got for us? Well, what I got... For summer 2018, I have a lot of details to tell you about it, mm. and so start drinking. Uh, no, actually, going to be here a while. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. Um, the one I went to was one that I've gone to quite often this summer is the uh, Bear Republic Racer Five, mm-hmm. and a couple of couple of times, like I mean, after working all day, I just want to go home, relax, maybe get a nice buzz going, and I'll stop by and get me a six pack of that, and kind of relax. Uh, other times where I'm getting ready to drive, I'm going to go Uber. I'm going to get just totally hammered. And I get like a 12 pack <laughs> of it for and a just long night's drive. Just slam it. Yeah, yeah. going to LAX. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, no, seriously, uh, that's that's kind of been my go to beer this summer. Uh, for just you just it's kind of hit you know with it's the spot it hits the spot. Um, it's a, a five IPA, seven and a half percent, seventy five IBUs. Uh, the beer advocate gives it a four point one nine. Uh, and Tab gives it a 3.87. Uh, it's a full-bodied beer brewed with malt and barley, wheat, and crystal malts. The malt base is designed to highlight the unique floral qualities. Can you tell I'm reading? <laughs> Columbus and Cascade hops, because I don't read all this shit when I'm drinking right. it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Racer 5 is one of the America's most medal-winning IPAs. I don't know if you guys knew that. And that's one of the reasons why I drink it, too, because... I just every time I That's drink it, I, I get one another one of those medals. Yeah, you, you know? feel like a winner. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Like, yeah. Finally, yeah. finally in my life, I'm, I'm a winner. Yeah, we, we felt healthy with that Avery IPA oh, a few weeks yeah. back, and and now we just feel like gold medal winners. Oh yeah, potassium and gold medals. Yeah, you know, that's that's the way it is. Um, so enjoy this iconic award winning IPA that helped define the West Coast style. And there's a trophy in every fucking glass. Yeah, it hurts my teeth. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> trophy is rough. <laughs> if you have feelings, man, be mm-hmm. careful. Drink it with a straw. Yeah, yeah, care of those feelings. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what's one of the nicest things about Bear Republic beyond uh, the taste, well, Racer 5 specifically, beyond the taste is it is now so readily available. It's you know, everywhere, yeah. It used to be like, oh, where, where can I get that Racer 5? And nowadays it's like, this is a great beer all the time. And it's yeah. always available, at least in California. I hope people outside of California can enjoy the trophies that we're drinking. Hopefully, yeah. Okay. And, and I don't, know, I don't, I don't know why. It's just for some reason this summer, it's kind of been. If you, even if like I'm not undecided, what beer do I want? With, you know, and I look at the race five, and that's it. That's the beer I want. Yeah, it's really, it's really good. Like I, I can dig it. The the uh, the mouth feel. There we go. There it is. Getting v- smart. Very <laughs> very malty. And uh, man, like you can really like taste it. It's not like a like a watered down kind of feeling on the beer. Like right. you know, it's 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 very nice and smooth. Yeah, you know, a quick side note about Racer Five reminded me because Racer Five was part of our uh, March Madness IPA bracket earlier. Oh, this that's year. right. Yeah, and it, it surprisingly did not go very far. Uh, right, it was up against some tough competition. I actually, think no, so. it did go. Yeah, we have a couple rounds actually. I think it, I'm wrong. It, it, it went. You know what? It was in the finals. It was in the finals. With uh, Ailsmith, who took the championship. I was wrong. You're right. Uh, I, I expected uh, Ailsmith to not do nearly as well as it did. Right. And to be honest, because of how well Ailsmith did in that tournament, I have bought a lot more Ailsmith IPA. Like, it's oh, almost yeah, as too. available as Racer 5. And sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Ailsmith IPA is fucking phenomenal. It is. It's amazing. Yeah. And I felt so bad that we didn't drink enough of it before until the tournament happened. So Right. Excuse me. Along the line of this one being uh, just delicious and always drinkable, Ailsmith IPA is that for me Absolutely. as well. And I've been buying both of these a lot since the tournament. And because of our show, Ailsmith sales have skyrocketed. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. It's yeah, breaking all kinds of records. <laughs> yeah. They, they told Ballast Point down the street to go fuck themselves. Yeah, they did. Oh, bam. Yeah. 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 So. so cram all that fruit up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> you can sit on that pineapple. <laughs> That's <the> right. <laughs> Shove that potassium up your ass. Oh. <laughs> 
potassium. Sal Point's like potassium. Yeah, potassium is good for you. We only use fake bananas around here. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, they use like runts. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they put in their beer. <laughs> oh, my God. That was the worst. Oh, <laughs> Those little man. bananas in the runts. Nobody package. ate them. No. Nobody ate the bananas. <laughs> no, who wants that? <laughs> Disgusting. Oh, it's so Nobody gross. Nobody wants a little banana. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan, what did you bring for okay, us? Okay, so I brought uh, Sierra Nevada's. Hazy little thing. Nice. Yeah, the IPA. And it's um, 6.7%, uh, 40 IBUs. So it's surprising. You know, that it's a it's a summer beer. Yes. Dan's, you know, on summer. I'm not cramming down the 130 IBUs. You hit like a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's a, so it's a rated 3.97 on Beer Advocate and 3.8 on Untapped. Nice. Uh, description says, as brewers, we get the privilege to sample our beers straight from the tanks in all their raw glory. Some beers need a little polishing to get ready to go out into the world, while others, the top-heavy, rowdy crowd pleasers, ugh, should just be <laughs> left alone. We wanted to share this brewery-only treat with you, so we present this hazy little thing, our unfiltered, unprocessed IPA straight from the tanks and into the can. So, um, is, if you notice, too, like, with me at least, like, the can gets yeah. your attention, yeah, oh man. Yeah. It does. It's, it's like this bright. teal, turquoise kind of color mm-hmm. with this bright, like, yellow, like, logo on yep. it. Um, yeah, and it's just crazy design, you know, like I said. like And big letter says IPA. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so right away it gets my attention, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, and, and aside from that, I don't know, I've just been kind of on this, this hazy IPA kick. And uh, this is the one I just keep coming back to, man. And it's, you know, it yeah, seems it's like good. it's usually readily, readily available on, yes. on taps, yeah. most taps. You know, you can find I'm sure it. they have it at the hipster bar. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah that's, oh, yeah, that's my go-to usually <laughs> during lunch. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's do that. One thing I really like about Hazy Little Thing is they take all the best parts of an East Coast IPA, like the, the juiciness, the hoppiness, mm-hmm. the late hop addition. That's why it's only 40 IBUs because there's no, not no, but there's less early hop additions in the boil. It's all coming at the end, so it's flavor instead of bitterness. So they get all the greatest parts of the East Coast IPAs, and they leave out the shitty parts where it's like chunks of yeast yeah. and gray hop material. Like exactly. They leave out the crappy parts and just leave in the good parts. All the good parts. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it's very, I mean, it, it it's called hazy little thing, but you could also call it juicy little thing, too. Yeah. Like you said, very... uh very uh, good fruit notes and um, man, the, the mouth feel the mouth feel makes you feel like you are you know drinking something like very juicy. Yeah, it's got yeah. a nice tropical aroma. To yeah, it. there you go. Thank you very much. That's all I was trying to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, super juicy, uh, fruit forward, and not in a balance point kind of way, uh, in a hop kind of way. Real easy to drink, mm-hmm. and yeah, I these are the kind of things that are just they're so nice. The West Coast interpretations of the East Coast IPAs are like my favorite thing right now. Right, you know, uh, Made West. Speaking of Made West, has the Giant IPA that we had at our live show at the local. That was phenomenal. Um, just yeah, it's it's really fun to see the West Coast brewers take the East Coast IPA and clean it up just a smidge. Mm-hmm. That's why I like. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a good description of what it is. It's beautiful. <laughs> that was poetic, man. Yeah, it really is. We should get Siri to read it for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, I think we uh, were very successful. In our summer beers. Mostly. Uh, <laughs> some stumbling. Some, well, <laughs> I didn't say in our reading. Yeah. <laughs> Just in our summer beers, we were successful. And uh, I, I hope you guys are enjoying some summer beers. Let's check in with our uh, friends around yeah. the interwebs to see what summer beers they're drinking on. Hey, it's Dale here, also known as It's the Beer Girl, uh, to tell you about one of my favorite summer beers, and it is Mangoza from Upcountry Brewing Company. This is a beer that they just started canning. It is 4.8% ABV, and it's part of their uh, Simply Sour series. This has been one of our best sellers um, at Craft Centric. It's just a very approachable Goza, and it's really perfect for summer. It's uh, really refreshing. Obviously, it's got a, a big mango taste, but then uh, it also has a little bit of salty notes with coriander and a really light, crisp finish. It's so good on a hot day when you're just thirsty and you want a beer. It's super mouthwatering. Uh, Upcountry, as I've probably mentioned before, is one of my favorite breweries here in Asheville, um, and they just redid their place, so they've got a super cool new tap room and a restaurant now. Um, they're open for lunch, and the can has some really sick can art, so I'll have to send you all a picture. 
But this beer is definitely one that I've been reaching for this summer, and it's one that a lot of people have come in and asked for, and uh, we had on tap that people have really loved. It's just not too much of anything. I think that's why it appeals. It's not too fruity. It's not too salty. Yeah, not too citrusy. It's just, uh, it's just got the perfect amount of citrus, mango, saltiness, a little coriander. It's perfect. I definitely might have taken it out uh, tubing a couple of times. It's perfect for going hiking. Just a really great outdoor beer, and uh, I would definitely recommend it for that. So North Carolinians definitely pick this one up. It is definitely one of my favorites. Coley Wyman and Nick Wyman, a.k.a. Average Size Dick Dick for the Unfiltered Gentleman, are here to review our two favorite summer beers. I will go first. Uh, my favorite summer beer is Cali Creamin by Mother Earth. It's a vanilla cream ale. It's 5% ABV and 18 IBUs. Uh, they use Madagascar vanilla bean, and that gives it the cream soda punch, but a dry finish. Uh, this is my favorite summer beer because it's readily available. It's different. It kind of spices things up, and I drink it all the time when I'm floating in the pool. And then Nick is going to review his. The beer I choose is Twilight by Dashutes. It's an American blonde ale. It's only available June through September. Makes for a great floating beer. A little hoppy, not too bad, considering I'm not big into hops, but definitely enjoyable. And it has an ABV of 5%, so not too strong, but not too weak, and just great flavor. Yeah, if you could find it, I would definitely recommend getting a six-pack since it only comes in six-packs. But yeah, I would definitely try the Twilight. Thanks for listening to our beer review, and we hope you guys try these summer beers, especially for floating. Talk to you later. Hey, it's Crafty Christina Dawn here to tell you about my favorite summer beer. Craft beer has been slammed with numerous delicious fruit bombs, unfiltered New England IPAs, and great collaborations. However, sometimes you need to take it back to basics and enjoy an amazing pale ale. I kept coming back to this beer all summer long because it's local to me here in central New York, and it's just such a classic. It's Saranac Brewery's Pale Ale. This pale ale isn't full of glitter or frills. It's a no-fuss, easy drinker with a lovely hop profile. It's an English pale ale with an American twist, using Citra, Cascade, and Chinook hops in addition to Bromling Cross and Jester. It is clean, crisp, and full-flavored, far from a watery, lackluster pale ale. It pairs perfectly with all things summer, barbecues, bonfires, hanging poolside, or listening to your kiddos argue and beg for snacks all day long. I'm not wishing for summer to be over, as our central New York winters can be pretty brutal, but I'm definitely excited for school to start. Summer's not quite over yet, though, so I would highly suggest you go grab yourself a Saranac Brewery mix pack that includes their Legacy IPA, their Gen 4 Session IPA, and this Pale Ale. For more of my beery thoughts, you can find me on Instagram at Christina X Dawn. Cheers from Crafty Christina Dawn. What's up, guys? It's your buddy, Homebrew James, and today I am back with a beer review for you. So right now, my favorite summer beer has got to be Scorpion Bowl from Stone. And not only does that beer have a really badass name, but it also tastes great, too. This IPA comes in at 7.5% and 76 IBUs. This beer is really well balanced, though, considering those IBUs. And I've been drinking a lot of hazy New England-style IPAs with the super low bitterness, like around the 30-ish range. So this is kind of a nice change of pace. So let's get into the smell and the taste. So right on the nose, I'm getting some tropical fruit. Smells kind of sweet, actually. Let's get into the taste. All right, so the taste follows the smell, but there's also like this floral thing going on in the background. It finishes really crisp, really clean, and that's something that's kind of lacking from some of the other beers I've been drinking, some of those hazy ones. And not to hate on those, because I love those too, but West Coast IPAs are where it's at. All right, this is probably some of the most crushable 76 IBUs you've ever had. All right, guys, interested to see what you guys think if you've had it, and interested to see what everybody else is doing. Hi, everyone. It's Nicole from Beauty and Beer, and I'm excited to share with you my favorite summer beer. I wasn't sure what to choose because there's just so many good summer beers right now. I could probably list a few that I like. And when the unfiltered gentleman asked me to 
share my favorite beer. I was kind of panicking because I was like, what do I pick? There's so many good ones. But I went to Pangea with my friend Michelle today and I ran into Liquid Grove by New Glory. And I've had Liquid Grove before and then I had it at Pangea and it just, the burst of flavors, the juiciness just reminded me why I love craft beer from New Glory. They just make really great stuff. This is an American IPA, 7%, has a nice hazy color, nose is kind of mango and citrusy, very fruity and juicy, but not too sweet, if that makes sense. It has that good balance to it. Thinner bodied. If you haven't tried it, I definitely recommend that you try it. It was a very hot day in Sacramento today, and I enjoyed drinking this beer very much at Pangea. Also, if you haven't tried anything from New Glory, I suggest you go try it. But on a nice hot day, I definitely recommend drinking Liquid Grove IPA. Hello from Australia. This is Amy and Josh from Demently Ann, and we do the earliest breakfast game show podcast. That's very correct. Uh, we are going to review for you our favourite beer, local beer, the Cooper's Brewery Original Pale Ale. Now, you might have heard of it where you are, but it's a real popular drink back here in Australia. Uh, and, well, all over the world. I've been yeah. to parts of England and had it, so you guys should get it soon, surely. And, as part of the review, if you're going to drink your local beer when you're anywhere else in the world, you know it's a good beer. <sighs> That's the sound of a Cooper's Pale Ale. Cooper's Pale Ale is the kind of drink you want to drink on a porch. That's right. With your mates, and you want to drink it in excess. You get under your pergola, yep. you sit down on a deck chair, and you tell everybody the last crocodile you wrestled. Yeah. Mine was called Gary. Or you tell the last crocodile you wrestled. You give him a beer too and say, good fight, mate. Yeah. You did well. I respect you. Yeah. So anyway, Cooper's Pale Ale. Drink it and you can wrestle crocodiles. Or wrestle crocodiles and then you can drink them. Hey guys, this is Corey and James with 805 Brews. Today we're sipping on our favorite beer of the summer, Ventura Coast Brewing Company's Rainbow Peaks Hazy IPA. James, tell us what you think. All right, let's check this one out. Let's crack her open. All right, so this one is a 7.1% New England style hazy IPA. Pouring it out, it's got that beautiful, hazy, opaque yellow color to it. Love the way this one looks. Got that great kind of citrusy, piney kind of smell. They use citra, citra and Simcoe hops in this one, so you definitely get a lot of that coming through on the nose. A little taste. Really smooth, really easy drinking. You know, uh, got that kind of silky smooth mouthfeel you'd expect from a hazy IPA. Flavor definitely follows along with the nose. You get a lot of citrus in there. A little tiny bit of a kind of dank, resinous uh, pine at the end, but overall really, really good juice bomb kind of beer. Definitely our favorite style, definitely our favorite of the summer. All right, thank you, James. And if you'd like to see what else is going on in the Ventura County beer scene, be sure to check us out at Instagram, 805 underscore brews. And if you'd like to see what these brews are doing in person, we are actually starting a Ventura County Brewery Tour bus soon. So stay tuned for more information on that. Thank you so much, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Hey guys, this is Deb, and I am the taproom manager of Flatfish Brewing Company in Camarillo, California. And the Unfiltered Gentleman Gang asked for a review of a summertime beer that I enjoy. What I'm looking for in a summer beer is something that's light, crisp, easy drinking, and a lower ABV, so that way I can imbibe a little bit more while the days are long. Uh, one of those beers for me is going to be the Easy Jack Session IPA from Firestone Walker. I love this beer because it's got that full-bodied hoppiness with the lighter ABV without sacrificing any flavor. A couple other local options that I enjoy would be the Mosaic Pale from Institution Ale Company in Camarillo and also the Barn Door Flatty Pale Ale from Flatfish Brewing. They also kind of follow the criteria of what I'm looking for, light, crisp, easy drinking. So come on in to Flatfish for a beer and uh, you guys can follow us at Flatfish Brewing Co. on Instagram and Facebook. And you guys can find me at One Hop Mess on Instagram. Cheers. Hi, guys. It's Shannon, co-host of Beer Harmony. I am giving you guys my summer beer review or my favorite beer of the summer, which is the Stone White Ghost Berliner Weiss. 
cool thing about this beer is that it was actually brewed in Berlin and it's available all over Europe. It is 4.7% ABV, which is awesome for a summer beer. Makes it easy to drink all day long. The IBUs in it are real low. It's at 12, but it is just this tart, refreshing summer beer. I'm obsessed with sours right now, and this is a kettle soured beer, which gives it that kind of lighter uh, sour flavor without it being super overpowering. It's got a nice balance of apricots and a little bit of melon, which I really enjoy. And it's just really light, refreshing, and clean. If you like my review, you should make sure to check out Beer Harmony, the show I co-host with Greg, and uh, check out some of the other beers that we review. Bye. All right. Thanks to all of our friends, our, our beer friends. What's better than a beer friend? Like, beer friends are the best friends. Yeah, BF. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. <laughs> beer friends forever. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so thanks to all our BFFs for sending in their summer <laughs> beer reviews. Oh, beer friends forever. Yeah. Um, if you are digging some summer beers, let us know what you've been drinking all summer long before summer is over. And if you're drinking any of these, even better, let us know. Uh, we want to know what you guys have out there. So make sure you follow all of our friends on their respective social medias. They will very much appreciate it. Make sure you follow us at The Unfiltered Gentleman, except for Twitter, at Unfiltered Gents. Keep telling your friends to uh, come listen to the show and drink some beers with us. And uh, fall is coming, so let's all try to avoid that pumpkin. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 Put up your pumpkin shields. Get away from that pumpkin <laughs> somehow. Yeah. It's, it's, it's coming. It is. It's rolling down it the is. hill. Almost September. Can't avoid it. And nope. I am not looking forward to the pumpkin. Yep. Oh, God, seeds be, and all. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be her. God, seeds in a pumpkin beer? Oh, <laughs> Can you that imagine? Would, that would be so disgusting. Be a New England <laughs> pumpkin beer. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a pumpkin beer with a bunch of seeds in it. <laughs> Oh, uh, any pump? I, I, well, N E P B, New England pumpkin beer. There we go. There mm-hmm. it is. Uh, that sounds horrendous. So, uh, <laughs> thanks once again to the friends. Thanks you guys for listening. Make sure you're keeping up, and uh, don't forget, drunk dial us eight zero five five three eight beer. It's two three three seven. I think that's everything. We had some uh, tasty beers on here. Today. We did some good, some for great, sure. great summery beers. Yeah, it's it's helping cool the ball soup. Sure enough, that, yeah. is, that is for sure. So it's pretty toasty. Yeah. All right, guys, it's hot as balls out there. Make sure you're staying hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>